Hello, and welcome to the Toledo According To podcast. I'm Riley Runnels, assignment editor of the Toledo City Paper, and I will be interviewing some of Toledo's most influential and impactful residents as they walk us through what Toledo means to them. Every episode will feature a new guest talking about their favorite Toledo attractions, businesses, restaurants, and experiences, with the hope of our audience learning more about the guest and finding more gems of Toledo. All right, so I'm here with Rhonda Sewell. Rhonda, thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. Thank you so much, Riley. I'm really happy to be here. So we obviously gave a brief intro about you, but just tell the listeners a little bit about you, you know, your occupation, how long you've been in Toledo, and a little bit about your story. So I always joke with friends, and especially my daughters, and I tell them I've been around since the dinosaurs, you know. (laughs) So (laughs) I've been around a long time. I'm very much a ride-or-die Toledoan. Yes. Um, (laughs) But I actually went to elementary school here at St. Angela Hall. Many people remember St. Angela Hall from the days of, you know, uh, when it was um, an active uh, grade school. Uh, the Ursuline Order, um, you know, ran the school, and it was just delightful. I'm still friends with my uh, friends from grade school, and then went to St. Ursula Academy for just one year as a freshman, and then my mom uh, remarried, and we relocated to um, Ann Arbor, Michigan, so I'm a graduate of Pioneer High School there, so Um, my developmental years I always say is from Toledo Mm -hmm. so I'm that's why I'm so committed to Toledo but fast forward went to undergrad at Michigan State University and then grad school at the City University of London Mm -hmm. in England and that's where I met Ferdinand Aubergenois who was the Blade newspapers uh, European bureau chief and he was my professor wow. and thought that you know I was a good writer a good student and said you know you need to be working and I tell people this story all the time he said you need to be working in, in Toledo mm-hmm. and so I called uh, all my friends my family and said I'm going to Spain to Toledo Spain to work and didn't realize he meant Toledo <laughs> He's from Luzon, Switzerland, so he had the accent. Of course. So that was just a funny story, a very true story. Um, (laughs) But I have loved my time here ever since. Um, Worked immediately at the age of 21 as a reporter for the Blade newspaper for 18 years. Um, And then transitioned to the Toledo-Lucas County Public Library. I always say public libraries are the greatest, you know, institution ever, the most democratic of all institutions, and worked there another 15 years. And you can't get much better than the Toledo Library, honestly. Yes, you really can't. You really can't. Number one in the the country last year, they won the National Medal Award. Um, Love my time there. Transitioned into kind of marketing and PR, Mm -hmm. um, and then was promoted to Director of Governmental and External Affairs. So that's more uh, contingent with like library funding and getting money from the state and the federal level. And then about three years ago, I was approached by current Toledo Museum of Art director, Adam Levine, um, about a job that he was creating called Director of Belonging and Community Engagement. I love the title. Yes. (laughs) Uh, So, and then I said, well, send me the job description. And one of the biggest compliments he gave me is he said, you know, I really had you in mind when I was thinking of creating this role, but not only that, you've branded yourself so much with the library and your Mm -hmm. past job as a reporter that I was really afraid to approach you because I was thinking, you're already branded with the library. How are you going to brand with the museum? But that is one of my strong gifts Mm -hmm. that once I believe in the mission and values of an institution and I'm working there, um, then I really align myself with the institutional values and and try to be very honest with that approach. Um, So I've been at the museum as its director of belonging and community engagement, which is an inaugural role. Mm -hmm. Um, No one's had it before me, so hopefully (laughs) I'm I'm creating a good blueprint for when I leave one day. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but I've been there almost three years now. So wow. that's kind of my, my story as far as career in Toledo. Yeah. And I honestly, when I describe you to people, say that you are the person who has invented a way to add hours to the day oh, because you seriously are involved in so many different organizations, not just through your career, but you embody belonging in Toledo. You Thank are a part you. of so many organizations, so many incredible works and efforts to better the community and it's so inspiring so we wanted to have you on because of your relationship to Toledo obviously our listeners want to know the types of places and things and what you love about Toledo what you think makes it special well first before I get into that I just want to say thank you I love when people give other people their roses while they're still here and Riley, you know, we all think, uh, you know, I'm your mom's age, and we all think that we've raised you into the <laughs> beautiful young woman that you've become, and we're so proud of your gifts. Oh, you're but, sweet. But at the same time, that is really the legacy I want to leave. Everything that you just said and described about me, that's, I take pride in that. Yeah. You know, I, I created a social media post. A lot of people read my post. I created this hashtag um, called Rhonda has spoken. Yes. <laughs> you know? And I didn't know the power of that hashtag until people said, you know, Rhonda, really like it when you say it, it lends credibility mm -hmm. because don't get it wrong. Okay. Because right. <laughs> when you put that hashtag on there, it's like, oh, okay. So if Rhonda said it, then she must know what she's talking about. And that's like one of the greatest gifts. But People know my authenticity yes. here in Toledo. I go really hard for Toledo. Um, that doesn't mean I don't love the world. I'm uh, just, I've been to about 16 countries in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. I've been blessed to travel internationally. Um, my friends in Detroit call me Ms. 75 because I go back and forth. They're like, hey, we're having something tonight. Okay, I'll be right up. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's just 45 minutes to well, so an hour right. away. That's so, what's so nice yeah. about the living in Toledo. You're so close exactly. to some of the great Michigan cities, which exactly. is awesome. Exactly, exactly. And then we have great other Ohio cities. Of course. You know, and I love museum hopping. So I love the Columbus Museum of Art, you know, the Cleveland, right. Dayton, Akron. Like we just have so much. Toledo, I used to joke and say, Toledo, Sometimes if you want to escape, it's the greatest place to escape yeah. because we're so close to so many places. And for a long time, I was, you know, uh, Chicago was my second home. My dad and stepmom lived there since I was age 10. So mm -hmm. I was always there um, in the summers or every other holiday, spending time with my other set of parents in, in the Midwest. And to me, it was just an hour by flight, right? you know, or four hours in the car, which is right. a, really a long time. Yeah. So I've always been that kind of person, but I'm also a bit of a loyalist, um, evidenced by how long I've stayed at different um, jobs. Like a lot of, of people have had multiple jobs. I'm like, nope. I was at the Blade 18 years, almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. I was at the library 15 years. Right. And hopefully I'll stay a long time at the museum. For sure. Um, so the things I like to do, Riley, are plentiful. But I will tell you, I'm an empty nester. I have twins who will be 24 this year, twin mm -hmm. daughters, college graduates. I'm so proud of them. However, as soon as they went to college, I was out in Sylvania Township and I said, I'm moving downtown. Yes. I want to be a downtown dweller. Yes. I want to be a hipster because I feel like I have a lot of life in me. Definitely. And I wanted to be a part of the scene. I saw a lot of economic growth downtown and yeah. entrepreneurs taking a risk, yes. taking a chance like Andrew Newby and Kristen mm -hmm. Kaiser and Will and Angela Lucas. Yes. You know, people right on my street. I'm I'm in Ambria and Kevin Mitchell Icheck's mm -hmm. Wonder Bread building. I remember Riley at St. Angela Hall, we actually took field trips to that building. Right. And they gave us little loaves of Wonder Bread. Oh, <laughs> how we'd sweet. Be, we'd be eating it on the bus, you know, coming back, but I remember touring that and yeah. You know, to fast forward ahead and say, oh, my God, I'm now living, right. residing, calling it my place of home, my, my residence. Yes. It's just mind blowing. But I it know. talks about, 
it really is evidence of how much we are developing and believing in ourselves as mm-hmm. a community. So I spend a lot of time at Toll House. Yes. I love Toll House. The museum is a member. Mm-hmm. So Adam and I are actually founding members of Toll House. And so we have artist talks there. Yes. We go to <laughs> jazz there uh, at Lucille's. Um, um, I love um, some of my neighbors uh, run things there. Um, uh, Marcel Horsley is the Dion for the Muse, which is the cigar lounge in the back. Yeah. There, um, you know, wor- there's workspace in Panda. I-, I have tons of meetings there. Um, so that's my real go-to right now, only because of its proximity as for sure. well. Um, that factors into it. But really, it's the sense of community and family that yes. I feel there. It's a public-private mm-hmm. um, social club, and so some parts are public and other parts are private. But when you go there, you do feel a sense of belonging. Definitely. And I do, I'm so glad that you pointed that out earlier. I try to live my life that way, right. to making people feel at home and feel welcome. And I also go really hard, Riley, when <laughs> someone talks negatively about Toledo. Absolutely. Um, you know, I remember it used to be a ghost town downtown like mm-hmm. in my early years in the 20s as uh, when I was in my 20s, not the 1920s, but when <laughs> I, was in, I was in my 20s, um, I would hit the road right to, you know, Michigan yeah. um, to hang out because I was like, there's nothing going on in this city. I'll only live here two years and I'll be out of here. Yeah. But, yeah. I think that's a universal experience. It is, it is. It is. And back then, Riley, there was like nothing. Right. It was just a ghost town. And But it's like you said, the way that yeah. these entrepreneurs and the way that professionals in our area have been totally transforming the city exactly. into a place that not only like we've talked about is such a great connector of so many incredible other cities but it also is a wonderful standalone oh. we could be nowhere near these other wonderful cities and still have so many businesses and activities and festivals and all these different things that we can do here it truly is incredible the way the city has transformed over the years and i think i have to credit like john amato for reviving the You Will Do Better in Toledo. Right. You know, that billboard over 100 years ago Mm -hmm. that businessmen at the time erected to attract other business here. Um, That really injected a sense of allowing us and giving us permission to have pride in Toledo. Absolutely. You know, before that, I will admit, we did suffer from a self-esteem issue. Yes. But now, um, and we have to give credit also to, um, you know, big companies like a Prometica. Right. That, especially under the leadership in the past of Randy Ostra, Mm -hmm. who really got the ball rolling and attracting big business here. You know, I always uh, give him his due, his flowers, Absolutely. and his credit. Uh, that you think that one person can't be that influential, but they really can. Yeah. And it really um, was sort of one of those things that just gave our our city and our community energy. For sure. And most successful um, places like an Indianapolis or you know Cleveland, downtown Cleveland, that have revived themselves. They all have a real bustling downtown. Right. And like I said, when I was in my 20s, that was not the case. Mm -hmm. That was not a lot of abandoned buildings and things of that sort. Now you see people taking that chance, taking it to a new level. And also, it really is a case of demand as well. There's a lot of residential living downtown, and so people are really demanding that hey we've got a great team in the mud hens we got a great team in the walleye you know there's so much to do downtown there's eateries there's places to go there's the rep you know Mm -hmm. there's there's all of the cultural institutions obviously the museum the opera you know i was gonna say our art scene is incredible oh my gosh like um a lot of my friends who live other places they can't believe the concerts we have the caliber of people who come to Toledo 
And so gone are those days of, you know, the John Denver song, the right. anti Toledo song. <laughs> um, you know, it really is one of those things where we do have a lot of self esteem in who we are. And I just like, I love the restaurants, I love meeting. Right. Friends at different restaurants. Souk is one of my favorite restaurants. Absolutely. Uh, Chef Musa and his wife Kara, they always say, We can hear you from the kitchen because I'm <laughs> laughing so loud, you know, with friends. And Chef Musa always says, I love to hear you laugh. I just love right. that. He goes, That's what I envisioned right. when I decided to move down here. Well, and know? it's funny, a lot of the places and activities that mm-hmm. you've been mentioning, mm-hmm. I've had other other people on this podcast talk about very similar places you know you would not believe the amount of people who talk about Toll House and the work that Toll House does to bring the community together and the events that go on there it's incredible and you know Ambria Mikolajczyk she was one who was yeah. on hold on I'm gonna pause while the phone rings somebody pick up that phone okay <clears throat> And Amber and Mikolajczyk, she was also one of our podcast guests on here and talked so much about her efforts through ARC Restoration and her efforts, you know, her relationship with Toll House and all of the different things that she does in the community. It's incredible to hear from not just, you know, lifelong Toledoans, but also people who have come here and recognize the beauty and want to stay here, embed themselves in it and better it. Exactly. That's so well said. And she's a good friend of mine. And we talk about this all the time. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, what is your investment into the city? And I'm so glad to see new places emerge. Also, the Golden Hind. Yes. Uh, Another place in walking distance of me. My sisters, you Mm -hmm. know. I just went to the soft opening there and, you know, I love tea. I mm-hmm. love, I'm not a coffee Their girl. Their tea is incredible. Oh my gosh. Incredible. It, is, it is so good. And I got to talk to the owners and they were saying, I said, so are you tea forward? Are you wine forward? Are you, there are savory pastries? And she goes, all of the above. Right. We didn't want to be forward in just one thing. We want to be known for all of that. Yes. And I just think that that is so incredible like just people taking the, that opportunity and taking that chance the the family the couple who who opened urban pines you yes. know there, there's another uh place just taking a chance on toledo and betting on toledo absolutely and so i want to kind of narrow in the focus to particular questions about toledo because i have some regarding your favorite events and places and all the things you like to do here so i want to kick it off with a really hard one the place in toledo that you are most proud of I think uh, the place in Toledo, these are hard, Riley. They are. (laughs) And I honestly, some of them get easier, but a lot of them are difficult for people who love Toledo. Yeah. I think one of the places uh, that I am most proud of in uh, Toledo would probably be the Frederick Douglass Community Association Mm -hmm. Um, Executive Director Reggie Williams. I am so proud of what they have accomplished and the meaning of that association in the neighborhood, in the Junction Inglewood neighborhood that it it resides in. It is a beacon of light and a beacon of hope, especially for our young people. And, you know, they, in fact, they just called me, uh, uh, Mick Earl, we call him Albert Earl, who's on the board and Reggie about a podcast room that they have there now. So kids will have opportunity, um, you know, and and we're not going to lie. A lot of the the neighborhoods around there are marginalized, Mm -hmm. are underserved. Mm -hmm. And so you have a place like a Frederick Douglass Community Association providing experience, opportunity, and all of that. I think that that is one of the places that I would say is a top five of a place that I would say I'm most proud of having and it's been around a long time but some of the things that are happening now are on a different level and I'm very proud of that place absolutely and I know we did start to talk about this earlier with Souk but I want to know what the best meal you ever had in Toledo was and where it was from I'm gonna get in trouble I'm gonna get (laughs) calls about this you're going to laugh at this, but I'm sorry. 
the pizza at Village Idiot. Oh my gosh. Great answer. I no think, one has said that yet. That is an I, excellent answer. I think the first time I, I'm a pizza connoisseur. Yes. Like I could <laughs> probably live on pizza. Like everyone's like, oh, I'm sure you go fine dining and all of this. No. Pizza, pizza is my jam, okay? And Toledo's home to so many oh wonderful my God. pizza restaurants. When I was it's in incredible. Sylvania, Riley, mm -hmm. J&G's. and gs Oh, gosh. All the good grease on the top. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, Village Idiot Pizza, I did the pepperoni and sausage. It, it, I think I was levitating after I ate it for the first time. <laughs> yes. You know, and I like the whole you know, scenario of you going in, it's almost like a speakeasy and going right. all the way to the back and yes. ordering it. And some cool band mm -hmm. there, like the Village Idiot and Mommy, hands down, best meal ever. I love that. Yeah. That's a great yeah. answer. Yeah. And I, again, it's another hard one because there are so many and you're involved in so many different organizations, but I want to know what your favorite annual event is. I'm sorry. And this is not a shameless plug. <laughs> But even before I start working there, it was the block party. Yes, absolutely. And let me tell you why. The block party to me represents the true essence of the diversity of Toledo. Not only do you have people who are in the Old West End that walk over mm -hmm. and participate in the block party, but you have so many people from even the suburbs that come to this one event and it's one of the largest parties celebrating Tole all things Toledo. Right. And it celebrates the arts. It celebrates performances, mm -hmm. music. Sometimes we'll have a headliner. Um, and, and, and it also celebrates a cultural institution like the museum, of yes. course. And a lot of times people um, say, oh gosh, I haven't been to the museum in so long. This allows people the opportunity for free to come to this amazing, amazing party. And so honestly, that's, what, that's one of my favorites. I always tell people too, if you haven't been to the museum in a long time, you haven't really been to the museum. Exactly. Because there's always new things there exactly. and new events going on. But yes, the block party as a staple is an incredible event every year. I totally agree. Um, I also want to know in the vein of art, what your favorite piece of local art or architecture is in the area. Boy, Riley, these are difficult. <laughs> um, so this is so <laughs> interesting. So favorite uh, piece of art, there is an Elizabeth Catlett um, sculpture in the museum um, of a black woman that is just so dynamic. I love Elizabeth Catlett mm -hmm. as an artist anyway. Um, but I think that's one of my favorite pieces um, in the in the museum or pieces of art. I'm a huge also fan of Yusuf Latif's work. I have um, I'm the proud owner. It's the most I've ever paid for art. Um, two of his original pieces in my home, and one of them is based on a song by The Roots. So it's yeah. just really cool. Um, he's one of my favorite artists um, because he represents, you know, the region as well, but a proud Toledo. And I have to plug for mm -hmm. our own department here at the mm -hmm. City Paper. Talk about an incredible duo of artistic brothers. Jeez. Yusuf's brother, Imani, is our production manager here and oversees a lot of our design efforts. And he is just incredibly talented as well with his illustrations and all this stuff i mean can't get better than those two right no he's uber uh talented imani i work with him a lot when i worked at the library mm -hmm. um they're just a, a beautiful family Absolutely. and a very highly talented family for sure um but yeah that would be it and then as far as architecture is concerned um Wow, that's a hard one as far as buildings are concerned. Again, I could always say the neoclassical look of the of the museum would be one of one of those go tos For that sure. we would send um, people to. But I also like uh, some of the beautiful architecture of the older buildings in the old West End. Yeah, like the historic buildings, like the Libby House mm -hmm. and places like that. Like. 
you almost feel like when you walk into one of those buildings in the old West End that you're you've gone back in time. Definitely. You know, and you can kind of picture some of the balls that might have occurred. Like some of those right those those mansions have ballrooms. Right. <laughs> so so I think that's some of my favorite architecture because because I remember as a kid Riley, at one point, my family lived across the street from the museum. Mm -hmm. So we had access to the Old West End. And we would actually go around and see the lights during Christmas. And then like, oh, I'm going to live in that house one day. Oh, and how that sweet. Kind of thing. So I love I that. Think that just emits really good feelings to me, the architecture in the Old West End. Definitely. And, you know, you were at the library for so long, and I really want to know from your perspective, what is your favorite feature about the library? It could be something physical, it could be an event, some programming, up to you. But what about the library do you think is a standout feature? That is such a good question. And again, there are so many different things. When I turned 50, um, I had a fundraising birthday party. And part of the money went to the foundation, the Library Legacy Foundation, because of how they support all of the youth services at the library. So right. I think it would be uh, all of the youth services that they are doing. I'm also just so incredibly impressed by Erin Baker, who is kind of my counterpart mm -hmm. as well. Um, she's director of DEI, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. She's taken the library to a whole new level as far as having programming, lectures, talks inside of the library, which also um, welcomes new audiences that right. they have not had maybe before. So I think the youth youth programming and also the some of the work that Erin specifically is doing there. Definitely. And it truly is incredible to see all of the things that the library has done. I mean, over the years, I'm sure even just seeing from when you worked there, watching it grow and change and evolve, it's it's been incredible. But like you said, particularly the youth programming is so inspiring. We try to write about as much as we can with Toledo Area Parent and, you know, make sure that we're finding ways to encourage our youth to go to the library. That is so good. I mean, like I said, it's one of the most democratic of all institutions. And the late Clyde Scholes, mm -hmm. who basically worked there for all of his life, um, he really instilled in me um, a love of the values of the right. library, what it really stood for. He said that one time um, Alex Haley, who wrote the famous book Roots, once spoke at a library convention that he attended and said that if you want to know anything about a city, all you have to do is visit the local library and sit there for an afternoon. And it's a whole microcosm of what that community values, what it's all about. And he's really right about that. You can do that with the main library downtown and you'll see wealthy donors to mm -hmm. people who are challenged, house challenged. Um, and it's just so many different people but yet all of them have the same opportunity for information, to gather information in, mm -hmm. in the library. And that's why we have to be dogged about protecting the library and funding Absolutely. the library. And I'm proud that I was also the inaugural director of uh, governmental affairs. So taking it to a new level of funding, making sure that legislators knew that places like museums and libraries are worthy of the type of funding because they enrich a city. They not only enrich minds, but they add to the economic growth of a city. Absolutely. And so making that tie-in, I really am proud of the work that I did when I was there or started and that Lucas Stahl now is continuing on a whole different level. Yes, absolutely. It is so incredible. And obviously, you are downtown pretty much all the time now between your work and your involvement in your house. So I want to talk about the street that you drive or walk on most often. 
Ooh, that that's a great question. Now I know the old you would have said yeah. I seventy five. Yeah. The yes. new you though. <laughs> the new you, it's probably uh, Summit mm-hmm. Street. Yeah, North Summit specifically. For sure. Because I have a dog, mm-hmm. uh, Oliver Gavin, who is eight years old and he's a, a mixed terrier. Oh, how I'm cute. Walking up and down, but a lot of the walking is for him. But it's also to see all the new development. Yes. And um, the Strula is one of the oldest neighborhoods in Toledo that mm-hmm. I live in. I'm so blessed to live there. So I'm always up and down Summit. In fact, I've gotten to the point where I can't wear like my pajama bottoms and some flip flops outside to walk the dog anymore. <laughs> because when I'm on North Summit, I get honked at all the time. And it's friends. It's just friends of who course. know me. And I'm like, God, I got to look a little bit better <laughs> when I go out here and walk my dog. But um, And then in the back is a dog park that is on our property. Mm-hmm. Um, but Oliver likes to be walked, you know, on. He prances, actually, <laughs> up and down North Summit. And then there's, you know, Ostrich Town. And there's all these new developments. Golden Hind is on the opposite way going toward downtown. I like to look at all of the, d- the development that's happening. I know that uh, the Lucases are also going to be opening a bodega called Milk mm-hmm. soon. So I like walking past that building to see what's new today. You know, right. what are some of the new developments? So honestly, that is the most walked um, street uh, North Summit Street. For sure. Yeah. And I'm sure that there are not many things you can answer to this question, but is there anything that you've always meant to do in Toledo that you have not yet done? I think I've done it all, but let me think about something that I have not done and that I want to do. It's probably more of a place that I want to visit. Mm -hmm. There was a... (laughs) I don't even know if it's open anymore, but there was a place on Reynolds Road. Was it called Dolly? So people who listen would know, like Dolly, Dolly and Joe's or something. And I don't know. It just looked like a cool restaurant, like a throwback. I love that. restaurant. Yeah. And I always wanted to go in there to see the type of food they had. I don't even know if it's still there, um, but it was where the old um, Jesse James Theater Mm -hmm. down the street used to be because I'm old enough to remember going to the drive-in theater on Reynolds, you know, uh, to the Jesse James Theater. But yeah, there was a place called, is it Dolly and Joe? Something like that. I always wanted to go in there, but really I've done it all. I've been to every festival. (laughs) I've been to all of the things that they're, they're, you know, I'm like a busybody when it comes to Toledo. I, I always like to explore um, uh, there are some, maybe some new places that I have not been, but I think I've done it all. But that was one in particular. I would always drive by and say, that looks like such a cool place. Mm-hmm. I love that. And if you're listening and know what she's talking yes, about, please. comment what it's called. Yes, what is that place? <laughs> so, um, obviously we both have such a shared love of Toledo, but I'm curious if you could change one thing about Toledo, what would that be? I definitely am troubled, um, <clears throat> if I could wave a magic wand, I'm definitely troubled by the amount of violence against young people and mm-hmm. youth on youth violence. Um, and many of them affect uh, communities of color. So there's something broken um, and we've got to address it. And, you know, we can have all the task force and you know, people out there trying to do the kinds of things that they're doing. And um, that's great. But at the same time, we have to start talking to our young people and making sure that there's more equity uh, when it comes to the services, when it comes to um, some of the things that they are getting exposed to. Right. We want to make sure it's equitable in the suburbs as well as central Toledo. For sure. Um, and because it is not equitable at the time, we see a lot of disparity and violence and communities turning on themselves. Right. And that is one thing that I would change immediately 
if I had that power to do so. I try to do it in my own small way by being a mentor Mm -hmm. to young people um, and talking to them like, you know, um, there's a saying that goes, each one teach one, Mm -hmm. but mine is each one reach one. Right. You have to reach back and um, talk about some of the things that maybe you were missing as a child. For sure. and, And exposing young people to that and giving of your time as a mentor I really pride myself on you know making my time available to young people anytime uh to talk I'll I'll tell you one of my best friends Diana Patton Mm -hmm. has so many great programs that she's doing her All Rise Academy but also she's doing things in the school system Mm -hmm. like at Ella P. Stewart um she is is saying to the world especially young young girls this is I wish I had somebody like me back then. Right. And I think I uh, have adopted that same mantra that Diana has effectively done in her business is that, you know, we, it's all of our responsibility to reach back. But the right. violence, we've got to get the guns off the street. We've got to address what it is that's broken mm-hmm. uh, with our young people and go from there and really pay attention to Central Toledo. We can't have all this downtown development and suburban development without um, really addressing, you know, the center or the heart of the community. Right. And that's it's such an admirable quality about you that you are so giving to the community, but also to youth. I mean, it's so important to raise this next generation. And that's something to me, too, that the the library's programming for youth is such a great hub for people to come and have something to do that keeps them away from, you know, any violence or you know, helping them to learn and grow. Exactly. Our anchor institutions, I don't think they get enough publicity or right. recognition for what they're doing for young people. Our family center at the Toledo Museum of Art is always packed. Absolutely. And, and it is one of those things where people have grown up in the museum um, going to some of the free services that we have there, the opera, doing their opera on wheels, you know, going into uh, like the library systems and having a mini production of Romeo and Juliet, right. you know, and then having the kids ask questions mm-hmm. at the end. You know, that exposure to culture is such a gift. And a lot of our, our anchor institutions that are in really in arts and culture, they do a lot with youth. Definitely. as well that may not be as known as other programs for sure. but I'm really really thankful for that because it does keep kids busy and occupied right and I know this is a little bit of a hard pivot to a more lighter subject but I'm curious you know all the wonderful places we have in the area what do you think the best view of Toledo is um it is definitely there's a couple of places Mm -hmm. one that's very popular um and it was always so funny when i worked at the library i'd be on the rooftop and people would say are you are we allowed to go out there and i'd say well yeah you paid for it so (laughs) (laughs) so yes because half the funding comes from you know the local tax uh, evaluations and um so that's one of the famous views. Um, and then this is not so much a view, but just the phenomena that has occurred is the beautiful columns of the Toledo Museum of Art. Every wedding, every graduation, every homecoming, mm-hmm. every selfie is taken <laughs> on those beautiful columns. Absolutely. And if you're across the street at the Glass Pavilion and looking toward the columns, it is a beautiful view. It's Gorgeous. not so much a cityscape or a landscape, but it is a building scape, right. you know? And people know that, so they take pictures. That It's it's like an obligatory thing yes. that you have to do if you have a dance. Sometimes we've had as many as 5,000 young people after graduate graduations from all of course from as far away as Berkey to Mm -hmm. like you know Libby High School or whatever it may be 
So people will come and, and take pictures. So, yeah. yeah. And, you know, I know you do travel a lot. You have been to so many different places in the world. But obviously, Toledo's your anchor. So when you're away from Toledo, what can't you wait to have when you get back? Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Well, hey, let's talk about that pizza. <laughs> I was going to say, the Village Idiot pizza the village first. Idiot. <laughs> yes, yes. Like, a lot of people always say Gino's, but mm-hmm. I love, I prefer Village Idiot. And don't, I hope you don't get hate calls because <laughs> Gino's has been like kind of the quintessential uh, pizza branded with uh, Toledo, mm-hmm. but... There's so many others, Amy's and J and G's and Village Idiot. So as far as food is concerned, I I love that. But let's talk about libations for a minute. Yes. Let's talk about the old fashions at Toll House. Yes. They've become known for their old fashions. Truly. Um, And so just having a good cocktail... Um, bourbon is such a conversational drink. Yes. And so that, you know, usually like you've been in the airport all day. You've been <laughs> like, you know, like, help me. The first place I want to go is have to have Brad Tolliver or any of the other mixologists at Toll House to make me a signature old fashioned with um, Rittenhouse, which yes. is their house bourbon. And um, I think that those are the two things that I can't <laughs> wait. I'm just being very honest. No, right that's now. perfect. But those that's are perfect. those are the things that I can't wait to indulge in when I get back from a trip, especially an international trip. Mm-hmm. That's been you know you're in the plane all day and yeah, you just need you a just good drink, need a good libation, to, <laughs> and and a good conversation. Yes, with with that comes with a cocktail like that comes conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you have a lot of special places in Toledo that you love to go, but is there anywhere in particular that you find yourself going when you need inspiration? Oh, that is so good. There is something about um, some of the churches Mm -hmm. here. Um, Rosary Cathedral is just so just gorgeous, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, The outside and the inside. And so I have been there many times just sitting Mm -hmm. (laughs) or taking a picture or something. My daughters and I would go and just take pictures on the steps. Yeah. Um, So I think, you know, I'm a deep, uh, an unapologetic woman of faith. Mm -hmm. And I think um, the church, uh, the physical church, um, there are some really historic churches in Toledo. We're holy Toledo after yes, all. Yes, of course. But but I think that that, that would be a place. Um, and then um, I'm telling you, Metro Parks Toledo kind of saved all of our lives during the pandemic. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I would walk. In fact, I developed some great and meaningful friendships. Um, Dr. Charlene Gilbert, who's no longer here in Toledo, she moved to Atlanta. She's a provost now, but worked at the University of Toledo. We, our friendship deepened because we were walking and it was inspirational. You know, we couldn't really get out, but outside was kind of safe, right? right. And uh, Carla Thomas, the photographer, I was I walked with her many times. Um, and Bria and Diana, mm-hmm. like we'd all formed a walking group as well. And I think, um, those are the places that I go for like solace. It's like any one of the Metro parks. Um, I don't really have a favorite at all. I go to all of them, you know, it's like, just depends on what side of town I'm on. You know, what's funny. I did have a question on Mm -hmm. here for you, which Mm -hmm. Metro park is your favorite, but I took it off halfway through our interview because I didn't want to make you choose. Well, it's so hard. Now I will say because of the, the glass city pavilion and the ribbon and my downtown location, I do probably spend more time there. We take the Naturally, dog. Naturally, right. We take the dog there just because of its downtown location. And it's cool. It's very it's cool. It's so cool. But I'm at Ottawa. I'm at all the other ones, For too. For sure. Yeah. So, but yeah, though, uh, the, that Rosary Cathedral in particular mm-hmm. and uh, many of the Metro Parks, the walking, um, you know, just helped me so much, you yeah. know, especially during the pandemic. It was just, Absolutely. and then sometimes when I just need 
a minute to just think and collect my thoughts. I'll go by myself. Mm -hmm. Um, One of my really dear friends, Molly Lukey, um, I'm like obsessed with her IG page (laughs) because she, she walks a lot in the Metro parks and takes pictures. Yeah. And her pictures are like, I, I want her to create like a book. Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and like her, her quotes or her social media mm-hmm. posts, and she loves poetry and all of that. And she said that, you know, that is one of the things where she goes to center herself. Yeah. And I, I think I do the same thing. Not as much as she does. I, I live vicariously through her IG posts. <laughs> <laughs> but when I really need to get out there, when the weather is good, I will go out by myself. I won't even call a friend. I'll go and I'll see 10 million people for out sure. There. But at the same time, it is a place where you can go and collect your thoughts and think. Yeah. And I just, I have one final question for you. And I want to know who the Toledo win is that you most admire. Oh, that's so wrong. I know. Um, I know. Saved the toughest for last. Yeah. Well, everyone knows it would have to be my mom, um, Billy Johnson. Mm -hmm. Um, She was not born in Toledo. Neither one of us were born here, but we're diehard transplants. And she just retired after 49 years of service as executive director of the Area Office on Aging of Northwest Ohio. And she is really my rock. Yeah. You know, she's the person. We're total opposites when it comes to um, who we are, but our belief system is very, very much alike. And if I ever wear my hair back in a bun, I remember back in the day, people would say, Billy, hey, let's do lunch. You know, they, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, they don't know. I'm not my mom. Or, like, wrong yeah, one, so wrong close. One. And then I just give them a thumbs up, right. you know, and call her and say, you know, some man with gray hair wants to do lunch with you. I don't know who it is. You know, <laughs> so, so uh, but she would have to be, uh, she's the glue in our family that keeps us together. She is the person that I most admire. And anyone who knows her, uh, what you see is what you get with her. She's one of the most uh, diplomatic people. Absolutely. I have problems with diplomacy, but she (laughs) does not. And I just learn from her. I learn from her grace. She gives people so much grace. Definitely. You know, whereas I'm, my strong suit is being present with people. Mm -hmm. She gives people grace. And that is something that I take from her and try to adhere to that. But she's really the greatest person that I admire. There are so many others. But that's a great one to pick. She yes. Is, she really is the one that hits closest to home for me. For sure. Yeah. And I mean, truly, both of you are such wonderful examples of what it's like to love a community and give back to the community and so it's so incredible to hear from you all of these wonderful things that you're doing and all the things that make Toledo special to you so thank you so much for joining us we are so happy to have you and learn a little bit about what makes Toledo your home thank you so much Riley for having me Thank you for listening to the Toledo According To podcast. Make sure to check out Toledo City Paper in print and online, as well as all of the publications under Adam Street Publishing, including Mature Living, Toledo Area Parent, Ann Arbor Family, Current, and Finley Living. Find us on social media or connect with us if you have any story ideas to share.